Hello, David Williams here from the Electronic Engineering Technology Department at Okanagan College. And this video today is on using diode models in circuits to calculate voltage and current across the different components in the circuit. Now here are the four different models for that we're going to use for looking at diodes in both the forward bias and the reverse bias configuration. And you can see in the reverse bias configuration, it's pretty much all the same. So that diode acts like an open circuit, so there will be no current in that in going in through the diode in the circuit. In the forward biased configuration, though, the models do differ. In the in the first model, we just consider the diode as a short. So it says if it's just a, a piece of wire with no voltage drop across it, no resistance of it. And if you wanted to calculate things in the circuit, well, it's just the voltage applied across this resistor, and we can use Ohm's law to calculate the current. Model 2, we can see here's our, here's our diode, and we are replacing the diode now with a voltage source in the opposite orientation of the battery source. And there's some small voltage of the diode, depending on the type of diode, anywhere from 1.2 volts to, to 4 volts for, for uh, different types of LEDs, for certain types of LEDs. And we consider this voltage drop across the diode when we want to calculate what is the voltage across this resistor. That would be the voltage from the source minus the voltage drop across the diode is what's left over across the resistor. And then model number three takes into account not only the voltage drop across the, of, of, the, of the diode, but also the internal resistance or the bulk resistance of the diode. And this can be approximated from the actual, the actual relationship between voltage and current. But it's something that we're, I'll, I'll just uh, come up with a number and I'll explain a little bit more about the number that I'm going to use in the future. Now model number four uses the actual Shockley's equation. And we're not going to, to look too closely at this, but just look at, at how it might be used. And it's, it's more, it's not used so much if, you're, if you've got a circuit in front of you and you want to figure out just on, on a piece of paper what's happening. But it's more if you want to get some exact behavior of a circuit and you want to plug things into a simulator, and the simulator is going to use this equation to do the modeling of the diode. So here's a simple circuit with some numbers put in for the, some values put in for the voltage source, as well as for the resistor. Now with model one, this diode is forward bias, and therefore it's going to be acting like a short. So we have 4.5 volts applied across a 15, 1500 ohm resistor. Is based on, on the facts of model one, the voltage across the diode is zero volts. The current through the diode is the same as the current through the resistor. And the current through the resistor depends on Ohm's law. We will have 4.5 volts across it. It's a 1500 ohm resistor. And that is going to give us 3 milliamps of current. So 3 milliamps of current in a series circuit. So the same amount of current is going through the resistor as it's going through the diode. Now model two, this one assumes that when this diode is when this diode here is forward biased, it's going to have some constant voltage drop across it. And a typical voltage drop for a silicon diode is about 0.7 volts, 0.65 to 0.7 volts. So let's use 0.7 volts for this example. What that means is the voltage across this resistor is no longer 4.5 volts, but it's going to be 4.5 volts minus the 0.7 volts from, from this diode. So the current through the resistor, which is also equal to the current through the diode, is going to be equal to 4.5 volts minus the 0.7 volts divided by 1500 ohms. Now this 4.5 volts minus the 0.7 volts that's the voltage across the resistor. That's the resistance of the resistor. So again, using Ohm's law, we come up with a current of 2.53 milliamps. Model 3 takes into account the voltage drop across the diode, the same value as was used in Model 2, as well as the resistance that's imposed by the diode, the resistance of the diode itself, the internal resistance of the diode. And I take this number from I'm assuming that this is a, a 1N4001 diode, and from the from the model that I'm going to use in the simulator, I figured out that that, that resistance is about 4 ohms. So how are we going to figure out what the current in the circuit is? Well, again, I'm going to have 4.5 volt source 
but 0.7 volts of that is used up by the diode, so I really only have 3.8 volts left. However, that 3.8 volts is applied across not only the 1500 ohm resistor, but also the 4 ohms inside the diode. So, the current in the circuit, the same through the resistor as it is through the diode, will be this 4.5 volts minus 0 0.7 volts, divided by all of the resistances in the circuit, and they're all in series. So we have a 1500 ohm resistor plus a 4 ohm resistor, which will give us a current of 2.53 milliamps again. Now I'm only going to three significant figures here, and if I went to more, you'd see that there is actually a difference between here, so you can do that as an exercise on, the, on your calculator to see that if we went to more sig significant figures, we would have different numbers here. But it also gives a good indication that Model 2 and Model 3 are pretty similar to each other. So since Model 3 is actually a little bit more complicated than Model 2, why don't we just use Model 2 for most of our approximations and just forget about the bulk resistance of the, of the diode. Finally, Model 4. And I didn't actually do any calculations by hand for Model 4. What I did is I took the circuit here, and this is, this is actually a copy and paste from the Altium software, I, I entered the circuit in and then I ran a simulation on the circuit to figure out what the current in the circuit is as well as the voltage drop across across each of one of these different devices. So what I found after running running the simulation is the current the current in the diode was 2.58 milliamps and the voltage drop across the diode was 0.626 volts. So a little bit different than Model 2, but the drain, uh, the, the current in the diode is not all that much different, 2.53 milliamps versus 2.58 milliamps. So unless you really need some, some highly accurate simulation, some highly accurate, vol no, some highly accurate values for, for your model, Model 2 does a pretty good job it's only if you need the highly accurate ones that you would want to plug your your circuit, put your circuit into a simulator, run the simulator, and see what the simulator gives you. Gives you. It just gives you slightly more accurate numbers. So based on what we just looked at with the four different models, we and seeing that model two is probably the best model to use because it's this, it's quite simple, but at the same time gives reasonably reasonably accurate results. Let's take a look at a couple of other circuits using the same the same model. Now this circuit is pretty much the same. I'm just going to use slightly different. I'm going to use different values for the for the voltage source and and the re resistor in the circuit. We have a 470 ohm resistor here, a 9 volt battery, and diode voltage here. Let's just take a standard, the standard value again for a, a silicon diode of 0.7 volts. And we're going to calculate the drain current, not the drain current, the diode current. And I guess that's about all we need to know. Well, I guess the voltage across the resistor. Voltage across the resistor, we should actually probably calculate first. That's going to be the voltage. 9 volts on this side with respect to ground, 0.7 volts on this side with, with, with respect to ground, so voltage across the resistor will be 9 volts minus 0.7 volts, gives me 8.3 volts. And then I can use that number, 8.3 volts, over the 470 ohms. So this is the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance of the resistor, just by Ohm's law. And I get 17.6 milliamps. And what about this circuit? Same voltage source, same resistor, but my diode is oriented in the opposite direction. Now this makes the diode reverse biased. So current through the diode is going to be zero. 0 milliamps. The voltage across the, let's go voltage across the resistor, is going to be 0 volts. And therefore the voltage across the diode is going to be the full 9 volts. If I 
If I take a voltmeter and I connect one probe there and the other probe there, I'm going to measure 9 volts across that diode. What about if I have two diodes in series? Each one of those diodes is going to require 0.7 volts across it to become forward biased. So I'm going to have 0.7 volts here and 0.7 volts here. And a 0.7 volt just being a standard voltage across a silicon diode. If it was a germanium diode or something like that, it would be less. If it was a Schottky diode, it would be less. If it was an LED, it would be more. But I'm just using silicon diodes in these examples. So I'm going to have 0.7 volts across each one of those. Voltage across the resistor then is going to be the 9 volts minus 0.7 volts for the first diode, 0.7 volts for the second diode, which equals 7.6 volts. Now the current through the resistor can figure out from Ohm's law, I've got 7.6 volts across it. It'll be the same as the current through the diode. 7.6 volts divided by the 470 ohm resistor gives me a current of 16.2 milliamps. Finally, in this circuit, how much current will I have in this flowing in this circuit through the diodes and resistors? Well, you can see that. The orientation of the diode, this diode is prop is correct if we want to forward bias this diode. This diode is backwards, this diode is reverse biased. So we have one diode that's reverse biased, current cannot go through it. So in this circuit, the current is going to be zero. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about using the different diode models and circuits to calculate voltages and currents in a circuit, and and you've seen that the second model for the diode, the one with just a constant voltage drop across it when it's forward biased is usually the best model to use for two reasons. One, it's fairly simple to implement, and two, it actually gives a pretty reasonable approximation of what's actually going on in the circuit. So thanks for listening, and I will see you in the next video.